kind of shows who he's going after now, kind of pick a side. And I was obviously siding with Tyler and Monty. And I think that was when we kind of realized, wait, there's like, what, seven of them still. All of them are still here and no one has left. And we've lost Polly and Amira. Alyssa, oh my gosh, we have a lot to talk about here. And, you know, I kind of want to jump right into the obvious too. Like that Hopper situation, one ball, couldn't believe it. I'm sure you were like, how is this even possible? Like what were you- I believed it. <laughs> I'm that my friend Sam, that friend where if I have a dentist appointment, I get there and I lock my keys in my, in my car. I get a flat tire. I all of a sudden run over a squirrel. Like I have the worst luck. And when he said it was a girl, I was like, yo, it's so me. Really? You had that feeling as soon as he- I started laughing when he, I'm waiting for him to say the name. I'm like, it's literally going to be my ball. Oh yeah. My God. That was just crazy. I, I was waiting for like one of these situations where it was like the person with the one ball went in. I was like, mm, this is going to happen eventually. So who's the unlucky person going to be? And unfortunately it was you. <laughs> so were you kind of- prepared to go into elimination no matter what like heading into that situation just because it was so chaotic during that elimination and voting uh, I think the two that are voted definitely have an advantage because they're like mentally preparing you know Mm -hmm. and no matter again how many votes even if you have one person that's voting for you you could go in so I think I was as mentally prepared as I could um I had this gut feeling too the entire day I don't know why and I remember talking to Chris and I was like do you think I'm gonna have a vote and he's like I think you're gonna have one and I was like that's interesting he didn't say you might have a few you might have this he just said I think you're gonna have one I was like that seems pretty like you know um so I was like kind of preparing myself to have one vote um and I mean, once once it was one vote, it was my name. I was like, not surprised. So, mm-hmm. did you find out about the vets' kind of plan to like do this hat trick situation, or was this something that people were talking about in the house? Um, we didn't know in the house. It wasn't until after the show aired or after we filmed that it was talked about. So I found out like a month or two after, and I was and I didn't know the full strategic part of it. I thought they were like, we're bored let's put names in a hat and pick. And I was like, you're telling me that I went home over a joke. It was like, I can't even respect that. Um, But if they see it as a strategic move, they, they did good. I'm proud of them. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they were really trying to get the survivors and the big brother players to like, kind of get into that chaotic spiral mode. I would assume. And, I was wondering from your perspective too, how did it so quickly divulge into like the survivor versus big brother? Because the vets were kind of in the hot seat for so many weeks there. So how did it transition? I think Chris, I think Chris seeing his votes, assuming it's these big brother people doing it. um, The thing is like, no matter what big brother is always going to have this stereotype of being the lying sketch balls, but literally survivor and the vets are doing the exact same thing. Um, so I think once Chris kind of vocalized at Monty and Tyler, it was like, okay, it kind of shows who he's going after now, kind of pick a side. And I was obviously siding with Tyler and Monty. And I think that was when we kind of realized, wait, there's like, what, seven of them still, all of them are still here and no one has left. And we've lost Polly and Amira. Like maybe it's time to kind of lessen their load a little bit. And I felt like I was being like the main voice too. Um, to get out the vets and not a lot of people were doing it in return. And I was like, I'm not going to keep ruining my game if it's not going to be-, be beneficial. So um, I think that's when it started happening. Right. So you were down for this kind of different phase yeah. of the game or. Uh, yeah. Cause the, the game is all about adapting. Like you go from elimination with the votes, you try to figure out, okay, what's the best way to act? Like I voted for this person or that person the next day, the challenge. Okay. Who wins? How can we make sure we don't get voted in? Like it's always adapting. So I knew it was going to be a time for that. The transition of that. Um, I voted in a survivor girl when I went in. Okay. So who did you vote for? I voted for Chanel because mm-hmm. I figured the only other person, if, it, if I want to take out, we had like a big brother meeting. And uh, and the thing is, we have people like Josh and Fessy who aren't really team big brother. Mm-hmm. So we have Survivor who are all team Survivor. And we have like people that are kind of in the mix of the two. Um, so we kind of had a meeting to talk about it. And we like, we need to get a Survivor out. So I was like the only other guy Survivor, Sebastian. I don't want to vote in another blue member. So I was like, let me vote in a girl against um, Cassidy. Mm-hmm. 
when you guys were like talking about like Chanel and stuff like that, you voted for her, like the secret garden Alliance was still in the mix or was this like still, I think this episode was when it started breaking. Oh, okay. I think this was when, okay, because we were like, mm, we like saw all the survivor in a room together and we were like, whoa, wait a second. So I think this was when I was like, I need to make a move. Um, I could have done Sebastian against Chris, but I just voted in Chris. He's trying to figure out who it was. He wasn't really fully sure it was me. So like, this is a great way to owe him one. And then that way he's not, re- he's not thinking about his vote anymore. And I can help him out voting a girl. Um, so you were still kind of like, even like, with all these alliances kind of almost blue strong in this in a certain sense like you didn't want necessarily not, really, not blue strong i would just say like i would go i would speak up but then not everyone would back with their votes or vote in a vet like there was one time people were voting in tyler when they should have been voting in like you know when it was Polly versus bananas tyler had like a lot of votes and i just didn't understand why so I think my vote then I was thinking just my per like me, my game. And if I were to vote in another blue member right after voting in Chris, it just would have looked bad on my part. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of when it started to fade, like the secret garden kind of. Mm-hmm. And was this kind of like in the house where you guys still like loosely working together or were you guys kind of just like, OK, I have my eye on the other people in the secret garden now because we're survivor and big brother it was what was the dynamic like like, I feel like maybe the dynamic will change when I left because Mm. we were still tight and everything and we were talking and they were thinking about putting in Josh and I was close with Josh and I was just like wait why are they saying another big brother person and I think in that moment I just was like all right I'm gonna do my own thing and not tell anybody and just figure it out when I get back so I think with the um hat trick thing they did plus votes on Chanel and I think it's going to start getting messy now. But I think the main girls, like the Desi, Michaela, Chanel, and Tiffany, I feel like they're still going to be strong. But without me there with Alyssa, I was like her main person telling her all the information. It's funny because you'll see us all talking, but she's not in the room. And I, because I, <laughs> like, Alyssa, we're, we're with Alyssa. We're with Alyssa. And I just kept adding her to the plans. So yeah. I'm a little worried for her. Oh, so you got to avoid a little bit of that outcome drama there. So, <laughs> yeah. I got to fly home stress-free. Oh my gosh. And I wanted to speak about too, a little bit of the things that I've been seeing on social media and um, podcasts and stuff like that, because you have been involved in a little bit of that. I wouldn't say like drama, but first I wanted to know if you saw when Tori, she um, commented on one of the, like the promotional videos for the challenge. And she mentioned that. um, Oh, the confessional warrior. Confessional gangster. Yeah. Did you see Uh, that comment? Yeah, someone sent it to me. But like, my whole thing is like, I don't go in these confessionals. First of all, look at my size. I know my strengths and my weaknesses. And my weaknesses is my is my physical strength. And my strengths are strategizing my social game and, and saying what I like speaking my mind. So that didn't really bother me because it's like, but I, I never said I was this big competitor. Like, we get it. You won. Like we get, we totally get it. Good for you. So proud of you. We get it. It's like, let's move on. Okay. (laughs) So uh, it it was just like, that's the only thing she has on me is like, I'm this tiny girl going on the challenge, but like, I never said I was this big competitor anyway. So it's like, here. So was there any um, lingering tension there with her? Cause you guys even had a moment in one of the episodes as well. So and she did, I thought she was the one that voted for your, she was the one that voted for. Yeah, yeah. pretty funny, pretty uh, full circle there. Yeah. Um, me, no, I don't know about her. I think as you can see by her comments, I mean, she takes this game very seriously. It's her life. Um, me, this is my part-time job. I come home and I focus on my real life and what in my real drama in my life. That's a game, that's work, that's a part-time job for me. Like, I don't have any ill will towards her personally. She wasn't my favorite in the game, game-wise, but I don't have any negative things to say about her personally. You're going to have to ask her about me. I don't care. <laughs> we also had some, like, weird lingering drama, I would say, with Bananas. I saw him mention... Oh, my God, um, he's so dramatic. He is so I dramatic. I love that. I was like, okay, Alyssa, yes. Like, whatever you said to him, I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> my girl. <laughs> yeah, okay, so keep in mind, I his he still brings this moment up and it's like I had told maybe two people this moment because it's not like 
I think his feelings clearly got hurt, right? I came up to him to talk to him because now he's on the blue team. And me, I don't know how to be fake. If I have not really enjoyed your company, I'm going to tell you to your face and maybe we can move on from it. That was my point is like, listen, you're on my team now. We haven't really spoke game. Like he was very much, you have to speak to him to have a conversation. And I'm not, I'm not going to do that, you know? So I wanted to talk to him and kind of clear the air and be like, I didn't like this. I didn't like that. I'd like to move forward though, if you'd like. Like I was put, giving him an olive branch and he never gave it back. So at least I tried. What would you rather me do? Suck up to you like everyone else? Right. I'd rather just tell you straight to your face what has bothered me and we can move on from it. But clearly he's still butthurt about it. He's so dramatic. <laughs> it's so funny because the olive branch part of that was just very much lost in the mix because it was very much like she came up to me and told me what she didn't like about but, me. Yeah. <laughs> he asked, I was like, listen, it's this, this, and this. I was like, hey, like we're on the same team now. Like maybe we can, like, I'd like to be able to, and you know, he made some valid points of like, I can't really talk in with a lot of people. I'm kind of like a rookie here. And I was like, okay, that's fair. Like I was even agreeing with some of the things he was saying and I was trying to move forward with it and potentially have a relationship, at least a game relationship in a little bit. And no, all he took was what his feelings were hurt. So <laughs> right. he's I mean, still talking about it. Like, he's probably talk. like, nobody ever stick up. Uh, says anything like that to him ever he's not used to it so i'm sure he, that moment stuck out in his brain <laughs> like, i saw him in miami and he still brought it up i'm like really? we gotta let it go we gotta let it go but were you guys fine after that moment it seemed like like you guys were in the same space and stuff oh, yeah like we didn't talk we didn't really hang out we were just on a, a team together and then i literally leave like two episodes later so we just weren't we didn't i didn't like i don't like people that feel like they're what they have to say is more important than you already speaking. Like he cuts people off when they're speaking. Like I just, I, my personality, I say how it is. And like, I just think he's the same way. And maybe people don't usually say things to him and that's why he's still talking about it. But I saw him in Miami and we talked about it. Um, and he still was like, what do you mean? I, I was, I helped you out in the challenge. That was my olive branch. And I'm like, oh, my teammate, what are you talking about? <laughs> And we were just like, all right, it's a 50-50, like, mess up kind of thing. And I was like, all right, it's fine. Well, you are forever a legend in my eyes for doing that. Because, like, for, like as long as I've been watching this, I, like, want people to, like, kind of stick up to him like that. So I'm like, oh, my God. When I heard that, I was I like. I did it for oh. you then. I did yes. I loved it so much. I was like, oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. And that's, we're winding down here. I wanted to know, I've actually spoke to TJ like twice in the past like for both of these seasons and both times he mentioned that you were one of the I ones know. to watch and like that he loves watching you on the show and that he would be interested in seeing you transition to to the MTV version so would you transition to the MTV version I wanted to know it from you I have had that call hasn't mm -hmm. worked out um I have had the call a few times if I were to I would really need to train like this season I didn't train up all oh, I was so busy with work I barely worked out walking the dogs was my exercise like <laughs> I could tell excuse me I could tell the difference from my strength physically from season one from season two um so I would really have to train to go that one because that one's a little more brutal I mean never say never but I don't know CBS when it's shorter um it's less as intense like that so I don't know never say never but I I would rather, if I had to choose between the two, I'd rather stick with the CBS one. Okay. So you would come around for another CBS season too? Yes. But I think I would want to take a little break okay. because, you know, like I was saying this season, I, my business started really going off. So all of my time was focused on work and leaving. I was still checking emails like at the airport leaving with work. And so like, I wasn't mentally preparing myself and then I didn't train at all either. So I wasn't physically like prepared you know, so mm -hmm. I would want to be in a position in my life where I can have that time to train and be able to mentally be like, okay, I'm doing this soon. How can I manage my job? And like, how can I, you know, get an assistant or something to help manage my time a little more to prepare? But I don't want to just run into another season like I did and not be prepared just for the fun of it, you know? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And the business that you mentioned, it's Key Influencer Agency, uh, right? You're yeah. doing some amazing work at that. Like, Every yeah. time I see something, somebody's like getting a new deal and stuff like that. I'm yeah. like, wow. Yes, yeah. thank you. 
I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, super cool. And I love seeing everything that you're doing outside of the challenge in the challenge. Like you have been one of my favorites to watch this season, uh -huh. especially. So I'm, I was sad that you left, but I was excited to get to talk to you. But thank I you really, so much. Of course. And I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today about your experience. And this has been fun for me.